Hi guys, one of the most direct pieces of evidence used to support the idea that the Trojan War was supposed to have occurred in the Mycenaean era is the fact that in Homer's Iliad, he describes Agamemnon, the leader of the Greeks, as the king of Mycenae. Now Mycenae was the most powerful Greek kingdom in the Mycenaean era, hence the name, and that was in the Bronze Age. But after the Bronze Age, after about the 12th century BC, Mycenae collapsed from its position of power and it never regained it. So, uh, according to the way the logic goes, if Agamemnon was the most powerful Greek king, and he was the king of Mycenae, and Mycenae was only the most powerful Greek kingdom in the Mycenaean era, that therefore means that the Trojan War must have been an event, or at least the Iliad must be set in the Mycenaean era. Now you can see the appeal with that logic, but there are some serious flaws in it, and I have mentioned some of these before in a previous video. However, I wanted to expand on this point. So as I mentioned in the past, it's true that Agamemnon is mentioned as the king of Mycenae. However, that city is in reality almost never mentioned. It's mentioned a handful of times, only two times in relation to Agamemnon. So did it really have a prominence uh, in the Iliad? Well, no, it didn't. Actually, Agamemnon is mentioned far more frequently in relation to the city of Argos. In fact, his kingdom is called Argos, or the kingdom of Argos and many isles. That seems to be the name for his kingdom. So Argos is the city that he's associated with far more than any other city far more than Mycenae. So an objective reading of the evidence would indicate that Agamemnon was not the king of a Mycenaean kingdom, but the king of an Argive kingdom. Now Argos and Mycenae are very close to each other. So when Argos was powerful, it encompassed Mycenae as well. So historically speaking, when Argos became the most powerful Greek city-state of that region, its dominion encompassed Mycenae. Mycenae was therefore a city within the region of the kingdom, as it were, of Argos. Now, Mycenae was not, as some people assume, an insignificant village by that time. In reality, in the 8th century, it actually had reconstruction work done on its grand, famously grand Bronze Age walls, which were still standing and still in use. So in the 8th century, reconstruction work happened on those walls. So there's no reason whatsoever to think that the descriptions or the references to Mycenae in the Iliad are out of place in a later archaic setting. All this means is that Agamemnon wasn't the king of a Mycenaean kingdom, but of an Argive kingdom, and Mycenae was a still a prominent place within that kingdom, so every now and then he's called the king of Mycenae, but he's far more frequently called the king of Argos because Argos was the centre of the kingdom. Now, I wanted to uh, highlight some parallels to this in other ancient literature. So there are two, two parallels to this that I found in the Bible. So in the book of Daniel, King Cyrus of Persia is referred to in one place as the king of Babylon. It's obvious why he was referred to as the king of Babylon, because he had, in that passage recently, conquered Babylon, so he was the king of Babylon. Babylon was a powerful, prominent state within the larger Persian Empire. The fact he's called the king of Babylon doesn't mean his kingdom or his empire was a Babylonian empire, obviously not. He was the king of Persia. He was the king of the Persian Empire, but he's called the king of Babylon nonetheless because that was a prominent place he was associated with. Now, there's another example in the book of Ezra. In that book, we find that, uh, that King Darius, also of Persia, is referred to as the king of Assyria. Now, why the king of Assyria? Well, again, Assyria was a prominent place, a prominent state within the larger Persian Empire just like Babylon in the case of Cyrus. Now, Assyria was no longer particularly powerful, but it was still a prominent state within the larger Persian Empire. So we see that Darius is referred to as the king of Assyria, even though actually he was the king of the, the Grand Persian Empire, and Assyria was just one small part of it. 
but nonetheless, he's referred to as the king of Assyria. So these are two examples that demonstrate the point that a king of a kingdom or an empire isn't necessarily always referred to as the king of that whole region. Sometimes he's referred to as the king of a particular, more specific, but still fairly prominent place within the wider kingdom. So in the case of Cyrus, he's associated with Babylon. In the case of Darius, he's associated with Assyria. But they were both the kings of the entire Persian Empire. So in the case of Agamemnon, when we find him referred to once or twice as the king of Mycenae, that doesn't mean that his kingdom was a Mycenaean kingdom. The fact he's referred to far more often than that as the king of Argos shows that he was the king of an Argive kingdom. Mycenae, therefore, is mentioned simply because it was still a fairly prominent place within the kingdom of Argos, which is exactly the setting that we find historically in the 8th century, but it bears no relation whatsoever to the Mycenaean era. So a reading of the evidence, an objective reading of the Iliad, clearly points to the 8th century, towards the end of the 8th century, not the Mycenaean era as the setting for the story.